What's up, boys? And today we're going to sim New Jersey's uh, first season with Taylor Hall here. And let me just show you the lines here. Taylor Hall is going to be playing with Henrique and Toulouse here. Those are the best lines before y'all bash me on the lines. And yes, I did leave Patrick Eliash in here. Why? I am sure that New Jersey are trying to re-sign him. But even if they don't, I feel like they're going to sign somebody who can have a similar type of production in their offense. Somebody that can definitely not, you know, fill the leadership role, but can get as much points as Eliash has been getting. Uh, somebody like Yeri Hoodler, uh, Shane Doan, even maybe Chris Versteeg. And I know these overalls are kind of harsh for the Devils. If you look at Kyle Palmieri, you know, he should be a little bit higher. If you look at Devontae smith Pelly, I think he should be higher since arriving with New Jersey's provide that spark. Well, actually, let's move Paul Mary um, up here with Taylor All and Henrique because I think you know he's been producing really well with uh, New Jersey, and maybe he could play with them. Uh, we could obviously move, I think, Canelari to play on that top line, but since him and Hall are both snipers in the game, it would definitely not work. In real life, they could have some sort of chemistry, and it could go on pretty well. So as you can see, New Jersey's offense isn't too bad. It's deep, but I think they're kind of definitely missing a third-line center. Or you could even say they're missing a first-line center because Henrik's the second and Zajac's the third. Um, but you know, you can make us all sorts of argument. We all know Paul Mary has been playing a lot stronger than his rating. And same thing for Smith Pelly. Ryan Klo just hasn't been a success for him. He hasn't been too poor. What did he get last year? Um four points in 13 games he hasn't been too bad he hasn't been bad enough for them to buy out his contract I just remember how good he was with the San Jose Sharks on D they got Green, Merles, Verson, Moore, uh, Shlomenko's not going to be there we're going to trade him to San Jose in just a second and Steven Santini in front of that they got the great Corey Schneider uh, let's just get rid of Shlomenko here I, I'm going to film this because I'm sure some of you guys might not believe me here and uh, okay, so let's just go right ahead here and send David Slomanko to the Sharks. Come on, San Jose, there you are. We all know you want him because you signed him to this crazy deal. And we're just going to take two minutes to talk about uh, the Larson trade in just a second here. Okay, Slomanko, I'm going to take your worst defender for him. Oh, Storelli, come in here. You're going to be loved in New Jersey. Just kidding, you'll probably never play with us. Okay, so I was thinking, hey, the Oilers got a huge, 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 huge problem making this trade, or at least their fans do. But I, at first I was like, New Jersey also got a huge steal here, value-wise, but my opinions totally changed on this. So talent-wise, New Jersey are getting the upper hand with it, we don't need to have a brain to debate this. New Jersey have won this trade if you're basing it on talent. But on value, it gets a lot more interesting. So this year's free agency class was real heavy on forwards. And any team could not target a, any defenseman to lead their defense. There was not one on free agency. Shlomanko, Dan Hamus, Chris Russell, Jason Demers. Not one of them can lead your defense. And they're all in their 30s. 30s. I think the Merc it might be like 29, 28. But I think he's in his 30s. And um, Dallas, uh, sorry, the Oilers are young. If they sign an old guy, he's not going to be able to you know, stay to lead their defense once their prime of their youngsters kick in. And they're hoping Darnell Nurse comes that guy. And they're hoping and the Larson becomes that defensive leader also. But now let's take a look at the value of defenders this year. And let's start with moving it back to a trade that probably went so under the radar at the time and was criticized I don't even know if Jim Bennings made a trade in Vancouver where he wasn't criticized and well you know he's had his up and downs and mostly his downs this one I'm not going to criticize him value wise talent wise he's losing but it was Gabranson for McCann and a pick I think it's a second rounder might be a fourth rounder I'm really not sure my memory's not that good but it was a pick and I don't care what round it was. Just the fact that it was a pick was the drop of water that, you know, spilled the glass for the Canucks fan. 
And, you know, talent-wise, McCann, if you're unfamiliar with him, he has that potential to be a top six, you know, center, you know, first two-line center, a real big guy, that type of center that everybody looks for in the NHL. And he had a pretty good season this year. He had his up and downs, like any youngster's going to have. Come on, let's not bash him. And Florida gets him for good Branson. Oh, Gumbranson isn't a top plan defenseman. I'd like him on my bottom pairing if I'm a contender. If I'm a mediocre team, I think he can play on the top four. But, you know, he's not a bad defenseman. But his, the potential on McCann is so much higher. And at the time, we were like, what a terrible trade. And then we see this other trade for Larson. And we're like, oh my god, what a terrible trade again. And then you see Shalanko's contract. Four years, two point something million. When TSM projected him to go for about 900k and then you're like oh my god you know this is terrible stuff that our teams are given for defensemen and that's it the value guys for defensemen this year is so high because there's so little of them on the market it makes me wonder what are Anaheim asking for Cam Fowler and what are St. Louis asking for Kevin Shattenkirk um I mean the value is so high for these guys right now so I mean, it went totally under the radar, and when you just look at it, and you, you look at the players' names, you're like, wow, what a terrible trade, or what a terrible contract. But when you start thinking about it, how this has been constant this year for defensemen, um, it makes you know it makes sense on the Larson for Hall trade. So, I, I mean, at first, we were all thinking New Jersey got the world's biggest steal. If you look at my shootout commentary video, and I'm looking at it now, a few weeks after, and I think I look like the world's biggest idiot with what I'm saying. Um, I'm not going to take down the video or anything, but I've taken time to see the reflection that it's not, you know, the defenseman this year. It's not terrible trades. It's the value for defensemen right now is so high because there's nobody available for teams. And a lot of teams want to upgrade on D. Um, you know, a lot of teams were looking to upgrade their forwards, but there was a bunch of them on free agency that were available. There was some trades available if you went to go and get Teravainen. Um, and, you know, the big guy on defense, which every team probably had their eye out for, was Keith Yandel. He can play on your starting pair. But the Panthers signed him prior to free agency. So there was really nobody available on defense for teams. They had to pay the big price on trades. And teams that had defensemen that they were ready to move knew that and just capitalized off it so guys that's it uh the the devils right now are 20 and 16 and 2 depending yeah 21 16 and 2 and we're gonna simp right to the end of the season i'll see you guys at the end of the year what's up guys and the sim has been complete the new jersey devils barely play over 500 39 38 and 5 miss the playoffs again um i really think that Taylor Hall's acquisition can bring the New Jersey Devils into the playoffs. But if you look at it, it's going to be real hard. So, a lot of teams in the East are trending upwards, you know. If you look at Toronto, I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they're still a few years away, but they're definitely trending upwards. If you look at Buffalo... Uh, they just got Kyle Okposo. They could actually make the playoffs, but I'd still be surprised to see that happen. I think they've still got a few years left on the rebuild. And, you know, Ottawa and Montreal and Boston are also hoping to get back into the playoffs. And the only team that I think are clear to come out of them are New York after losing Okposo and Nielsen and replacing that, that unbelievable contract for Andrew Ladd. So I think... I definitely think that New Jersey's going to need to have one of the prospects come up big for them to make the, the playoffs, and Taylor Hall is going to have a big season. But without further ado, let's check Taylor Hall's stats, because that's what's important here. After all, this is his sim. Okay, so we got 40 goals. That is, that that's jaw, jaw dropping, jaw dropping, whatever. 40 fucking goals for Taylor Hall. Jesus fucking Christ. 37 assists. 77 points in 82 fucking games. That's fucking incredible. And what's incredible, and I, I mean, this is a video game, and I'm not taking this into account here. He also got 10 power play goals, but let's not care about this. Um, New Jersey play an unbelievably defensive system. They play trap hockey, which is very defensive. If he can adjust that system and produce like we just saw him produce in this sim, 
alongside Adam Henrique and Patrick Eliash, who, let's be honest, are very good players, but are not unbelievable offensive creators. Mad respect for Henrique, mad respect for Eliash, and, you know, Eliash is a great player, and at some point, he was a great offensive creator. He's just a gazillion years old right now. Um, but if he can produce like this in New Jersey, I don't care what the Sims says. I don't even think they need that prospect to come up big. If Corey Schneider plays big in net like he's been playing, if Taylor Hall almost has a point per game and has 40 fucking goals, I am sure that New Jersey will make the playoffs. So stay tuned, guys, for some more Sims. We're definitely the next one coming up is Montreal Sim, as they really have changed a lot their team gang, Shea Weber and Radulov. And don't worry, Radulov is going to be in that Sim. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more of these Sims, definitely subscribe to the channel and like. That's always going to give me a little uh, boost to make a new one. So thanks for watching, guys.